So you probably think it's really sad that makeup excites me so much, but when a new show comes out that has great makeup and has kind of a theme, I get so excited. And there's a new show in the UK on ITV called June, and it's with Sophie Turner. And it's all based in the 80s, and I love the fashion, and I absolutely love the makeup. So I am going to do a look. Let me show you the sort of makeup it is. Um, hopefully you will pick this up. Look at that, 80s love. Let's do it. So in the 80s, we'd just come out of the 70s, it was high shine, disco, lots of glitter. We're then stepping into the very, very matte makeup because it always, once you get one thing, it moves straight to the other. It's like when we had the matte, matte lipsticks. Now it's all glosses. Um, you see one thing, you know it's gonna change because that's the only way fashion can move is the opposite almost. I'm gonna start with the Maybelline um, foundation. This is their newest offering. It's Maybelline New York Superstay um, 30 hour. Um, why you would keep your foundation on for 30 hours is beyond me, but I'm imagining that's what 30H stands for. I'm gonna pop that on. Wore it the other day. I don't like a matte foundation because my skin's quite dry. However, it stayed put really nicely and lasted all day um, in a very inoffensive manner. I have got two little furry friends behind me. This is such an old school YouTube video in your bedroom. Um, you got an itch there, Darcy? It's raining outside, so they don't want to leave the house, so they've come upstairs with me. Um, this is 126. Right, foundation, whack it all over. Would have been probably more coverage than this, something like Estee Lauder double wear would do the job. The only thing with this foundation is it's matte, but it doesn't look heavy, and I want it to look a little bit heavier. It looks really lovely and natural, even though it's a matte finish. I'm taking the foundation all over because I'm going to make my brows a little bit thinner anyway, so it can work as a base for my lids as well as my brows. I'm going to take a little bit of MAC Studio Radiance Concealer. Um, this is their newest one. This one is in NC10, and just pop that here to lift the inner corner of my eye. And a little bit here, just because it's a tiny bit lighter, and a bit here. I'm going to take a Real Techniques base shadow brush and just buff that in. Then it's the case of do we start with brows or do we start with shadow? I think I will start with shadow. The reason I've chosen to start with the palette, this is the Mario palette in Master Matters The Neutrals, is because I just use concealer, it's going to crease if I don't set it quite quickly. So I'm going to go in with the lightest base, which is the colour that works for me. Obviously swap it out for whatever colour is best for you. I'm just going to use that over the top. And yes, it looks very neon white, but I want that. Is there such thing as a neon white? Just bright white. It looks quite light, doesn't it? But I want that. I'm then going to go in with this slightly greyish brown. Obviously use whatever palette you've got to hand. It's all about just having fun with makeup. Um, I know this is very similar to MAC Omega if you use that sort of colour. Right, and I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush, like this sort of size, and I'm just going to pop that in my socket. I don't want to blend too much, it needs to be quite in the socket. It's really kind of as a guide for me, to be fair. Next up, an angle brush and a darker colour. I'm going to go with this one here. I may mix these two, but I'm going to start with this one because I'm using a darker, because uh, I'm using a denser brush. The product lay down is going to be stronger, so um, I can build up to the darker colour as I go. So I just want to make that strong in the socket. I'm very strong around here where it would wing to my liner. I'm then going to go in with a pencil brush and just soften that around. Just wanted to get the guide. That's where the harshness is going to be. Pencil brush just to soften it. Back in again with the eyeshadow and the angle brush. Just to make that strong there. And then the pencil brush to blend it. Before I go too far with the eyeshadows, I need to check that I'm getting the right shape, so I need to do the next step of the eye and then come back to it. So I'm going to go in with a black liner. This is a NARS High Impact Liner in black. And I'm going to take that both in, in the waterline, top and bottom. Next up, Maybelline Matte Eyeliner. This is Hyper Precision. Um, I have to be careful with this one because it can bleed in the corner, so I'm going to hope my eyes aren't watering today. And I'm just going to do some liner. 
don't feel watery today so hopefully I'll be okay. It's the very inner corner that it would bleed upwards and then that's so annoying. That's when you use a, a gel pot liner, it doesn't do that. But I do find a gel pot liner, you know, like MAC Black Tracks, it's just not quite as dense, it's a bit softer. Um, back then, they used to do um, a pot that you would spit in or add water to, to get your liner. So it was a little, I had a Krylin one now, I was born in the 80s, so I'm thinking... I'm talking about 90s, so whether it's evolved since then. But when I started learning makeup and I went to college, I had a Kryolin little pot that was like, um, I don't think I've got a pot here that would show. Yeah, it was a little pot like that by Kryolin, about that size. And then you'd lift it up and there was a little black, uh, like waxy eyeshadow and you'd add water to it. Um, and then that would become your liner. That's what I learned with back in the olden days. So... I turn it round to this way just to get my point and pull the brush backwards. Next up I'm going to go back in with my angle brush and I'm going to use the black or the dark brown kind of mixed together I imagine um, just to kind of seal over the top of that liner tapping off beforehand because I don't want it to fall down. Just to hold that in, for, that in place. And I'm going to take the brown and just sweep it higher so it kind of blends them together. Take my pencil brush, just blend that out so it looks more seamless. And then take what I've got left on the brush and just kind of pull it into itself. I'm then going to take my black on my angle brush and just pop that really close to my lash line. I'm just going to do the other one and then I'll be back with you. Okay, eyes are in shape. I'm going to stick with the same palette for the brows. They probably would have used an eyeshadow palette. Um, and I'm going to go for the deeper brown. Um, and I'm going to mix it with the one next door. So we've got, because otherwise it's going to be very harsh. But I want them to be quite strong. They were quite strong. So I'm just working with the eyeshadow that I put there, which was quite a lot of placement. And just blending that in. I'm going to go in with a little bit of Stila Huge Extreme Lash Mascara. I'm going to go back in with my MAC Studio Radiance Concealer and just lift it in a few areas. This is NC10. I'm going to take my foundation brush to blend that. Well, this is actually a setting brush, but I used it for foundation. I'm then going to take a little bit of this um, Soap and Glory Lid Stuff, which is an eyeshadow stick, which has got a shimmery eyeshadow stick on one end, this end, and then it has a matte eyeshadow stick on the other end. I bought this thinking that it was a contour stick, and I really like the size of it. Um, it is in the colour Cocoa Crush. I'm going to use it as a contour because I think it is quite good for that. So I'm going to pop it here. Maybe a tiny bit there. It's a really good colour for contour. And then a Beauty Pie Pro Angled Concealer Brush. To blend my contour. I did absolutely think this was a contour stick. Just want a tiny bit more contour just here. On the lip, Velveteen Liquid Lip Colour in Jazz by Lisa Eldridge. Just going to let that dry, come back to it in a minute with a lip liner. I haven't tried to do it too neatly because I know I'm doing a liner around the outside. In the meantime, I'm going to powder up with my Pan Hit Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish in shade 1. Number 7, Damson Mist Blusher on the cheeks. I'm going to go quite low here. MAC Night Moth Lip Liner around the outside of my lips. I've just put some bit of shoe tissue in my shoulders to make them look like they are. I'm not sure if I look like I'm from the 80s or American footballer. Either way, let's get some shoulders going on. 
I think I look like an American footballer <laughs> that's come back from the dead. Big. I don't have anything with shoulder pads. I probably do, but I can't bother to hunt for it. And there you have the finished look. If you've watched Joan, let me know what you thought about it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed the eras of it. I enjoyed the 1980s theme going through it. Um, yeah. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you for watching.